B. What's up, guys? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Got my boy Jeremy in the house. What's up, everyone? How's it going? Got some Canadian whiskey on our uh, tables today. Actually, yeah. maybe I should grab one of the ones that you have there. The Alberta. Jeremy in the house. What's up, everyone? How's it going? Uh, the um, the Alberta Premium. You talking about? Yeah, the Alberta. Yeah. That's right. But I don't want to get too silly tonight. We have two cast strengths here and one 48 percenter. So I think that's plenty. <laughs> um, revisiting this 12 year old for the first time in a while. And man, it's, it's so good. It is really good. Yeah, that that original cast strength was what kind of opened the door to a lot of these whiskeys, right? Like I think a lot of Canadian whiskeys weren't doing cash strength until that lot 40 came out. Right. I can't think of many, if any, can you, uh, I can't think of any, I'm sure there might've been a couple that maybe went down to the U S but no, I mean, I don't think that yeah, I think was it, it class had something that they sent self, but nothing that came up this way. Right. Um, yeah. quick shout outs to go Habs, Loch Ness. What's going on guys? Uh, Ja Weeks, how are you? Kevin, how are you, my friend? Scott Winkler, how are you? Hope you guys are doing well. It has been a while. I haven't gone live. I, honestly, it's got to be at least a month. No, way more than that. Like two months. When was the last time we went live? I well, don't we, know. Maybe yeah. after like a, a podcast record we did it? I don't remember. Yeah, that's right. That was the last time. So we went live on your channel, what, a week ago? A little bit less? On my channel a week ago, yeah. Yeah, a week ago. And then, uh, yeah. So... It's been a while, guys. Missed ya. We're talking about Canadian whiskey tonight, and we're talking about how I think, like, I think the last time we kind of had a conversation similar to this, we were saying Canadian whiskey is is being put back on the map. They're on their way back, right? And yeah. I think my assessment of some of the micro distilleries, and I don't even know if we can call them micro distilleries anymore, because some of them are getting pretty large as well. Um, and then the bigger distilleries are, they're doing a great job now. It seems they're doing, they're doing, uh, a lot of hard work, which is stuff that we were hoping for, for a very long time. Like I got a couple examples tonight. Um, this great plains distillery, uh, they're out of Alberta. This is an 18 year old Canadian whiskey at cash strength. So it's 54.5%. Aged for 17 years in ex bourbon barrels, probably, and then finished for 12 months. So, uh, 12 extra months in brandy casks from Jerez, Spain. Um, this is interesting stuff. Uh, a lot of whiskey bottled from, so this is taken from a distillery out of, well, let's say the product you are um, holding started in as pure corn mash whiskey. From Old Potter's Distillery in Kelowna, BC. Hmm. So, very cool. Um, and then Last Straw, you guys have heard me talk about these guys. This is their 48 bottle release of their cast strength three year old. They put the name, or sorry, they put the age right on the bottle there. Three years old. They're not hiding behind anything. Um, cast strength at a whopping 65.8%. So, it's a hefty one. Um, this is the cask two. So they released a rye before this. They bottled it at a lower ABV. The rest of this cask, they're also bottling at a lower ABV, but they sold, uh, based on popular demand, 48 bottles at cask strength. And they sold out pretty quick. They sold out within one day. So, uh, yeah. So these guys are up and comers. Uh, some of you may know I participated in a whiskey with them a few years back. I think it becomes officially a Canadian whiskey as of February. So look out for that in the near future. And then one of the most recent lot forties is the dark Oak. So this was like the not so secret secret that Jeremy and I got in trouble for knowing about. <laughs> um, 48% it's aged in a virgin Oak barrel for few years probably and then it's transferred to another virgin oak barrel a an even more heavily charred barrel uh very similar to the process that Michter's is using with their 
um, toasted barrel rise and, and that kind of stuff. But this one's a little bit different because it's two heavily charred barrels. So actually probably more like a Woodford double oak, right? Right. Yep. Really cool stuff. And yeah, it's super dark. I'm not sure if it's natural color, but I'm going to assume that it is. And like I said, 48%. They're using virgin oak, so I don't know why you would waste coloring or waste that whiskey with, with coloring. I don't think they would, to be honest with you. That's a good question. I think, I don't know if Don has mentioned if he colors the whiskey or not. I feel like they do for some of them for sure. I mean, some of that wiser stuff is for sure colored, but I'm not sure if that one is or not. Yeah, I think they do. Peter White's saying that that was his fault, um, <laughs> that you and I got in trouble for the Lot 40 uh, <laughs> double or dark oak. But, you know, at the end of the day, we were just excited and we were sharing news with people that we knew would love it. Um, or I went, I shared it, but then again, like neither of us really knew that we weren't supposed to share it. So mm. whatever, bygones, <laughs> we move on. Uh, there was a comment from uh, Michael Jones, I think, about maybe batch two of a Berta Premium cast strength. So said something about the new 60, oh, sorry, Scott. Have you had the 65.1 Alberta Premium? 65.1. Oh, sorry. This is 65.1. Yeah, so, so that's a misconception. A lot of people think that that second release of the Alberta Premium is a batch two, but it's still actually just batch one. because It's still 65, 65.1, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, it's the same ABV. Um, let's just do a few hellos because there's some names I haven't seen in the chat before, and it's probably because we've been out of the game for, for a little while, out of the live game. So we got whiskey lovers in the chat. What's going on? I, I said hello to Scott and Kevin. Uh, Peter White's in the house. Whiskey Tooth is in the house. How's it going? Michael Jones. Colin, how are you? Uh, Scott Rance. Sweet 8 3G. It says Solange. Um, said hello to Loch Ness and Go Habs. What's going on, boys? Sasha, I said hello to you as well. Uh, Tyler. Taylor, sorry. Taylor Ross, how are you? Joe Weeks, we said hello to Indy Ingot, how are you? I believe Indy's from Australia, so it's not as late for him as it is for us. Not that it's late for us, but I'm just saying. All right, Jason Fisk, what's going on, brother? And then Lucas is in the house, what's going on? Um, saying like mine. I'm not sure what he's talking about, though. Is there something that we said that he could be referring to? I don't know. And then Andrew, how are you, my friend? Gentlemen. Um, just one thing. Did you check out Dr. Don's uh, Instagram today? Posted a picture of a bottle, no label. Oh. Looks like the old Wiser's red letter. I heard that the red letter might be coming out soon, actually. So that's probably. I think, I think a little, little Easter egg there. I think, um, I think we could expect that pretty soon. So I had the original uh, Wiser's Red Letter, and honestly, it was phenomenal. And I don't know if uh, Don Livermore was working for Wiser's at that time. I could be wrong. I don't. I don't think he was because, like, those pretty much got discontinued right when he started showing his face. So that would have been before him. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, at least he wasn't like as much of a presence as he is now. Like, he definitely wasn't then. Um, but that stuff was bonkers. Like I remember loving that whiskey and I had a few of them and like I went through a couple of them. And then when they redid it, when they redid the red letter, it wasn't as good as that old recipe. That old recipe had like all this viscosity. It actually had like particles floating in the whiskey because they, they didn't chill filter it at all. Uh, and what was happening is a lot of people were bringing it back to the LCBO because they were finding particles in their whiskey and they're like, well, I haven't even opened this bottle. Well, there's something bad about like this whiskey right. bad. And then, um, I remember like wise is releasing like some sort of statement saying, no, it's, our whiskey hasn't gone bad. It's just not chill filtered. So, mm -hmm. uh, because it's at 45%, it gets some cloudiness, right? So like the, mm -hmm. the chemical composition changes once you go below 45.7% or whatever. Right. So yeah, we'll see how, uh, Don's, uh, red letter turns out. Hopefully, it can hold its own versus the old stuff. Yeah. 
Yeah, so Jason saying Dr. Don hinted that some new and interesting things will be dropping soon. Mm -hmm. um, so he did release the the Wiser's 22 port finish, which is kind of cool. I want to try that. Yeah, uh, I still have not tried that yet. I haven't tried it either. People asking in the house, what's going on, Sam? Bob, hope you're doing well. Um, Peter White saying that he's down to half a bottle of Red Letter, picked up two back in uh, the day at 30% off. Yeah, there was so like, it was just crazy price back then. But actually, what, what was retail on that? It wasn't, it was like what, 80 bucks or something? Uh, that original one, I with a wooden box, I want to say it was 150 bucks, but I could be wrong about that. But for me, 150 bucks in those days was a lot of money. I like, I did not want to spend 150 bucks on a whiskey back then. But the wooden box sold me. I had to do it. Peter White said 100 for Red Letter. Okay, so it was 100. Maybe it felt like 150 then. Right. Um. So this is mostly corn. This Great Plains here, really good stuff. I'm gonna actually give you all three of these a mark really quick. Do you mind? Cool. So I was tasting this off camera earlier because I wanted to like get an idea of where I was gonna mark it. Obviously, I've taken some out of each of these bottles. Um, the Great Plains, I think, is really good stuff. I'm gonna give it an 86, I think. Uh, 85. It's an 85. Really good stuff. I'd buy another bottle at the price. I think it's only about 120 bucks in Alberta for an 18 year old cast strength whiskey. I think that's definitely reasonable. So I think 85 is a fair mark. Definitely needs a bit of water. It comes off a bit heated uh, at full proof, but that's to be expected. Um, have you tried this one yet? No. No, it sounds interesting though. It is. It's, it's cool stuff. It's majority corn whiskey. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they add a little bit of rye, but not much. Okay. It might be 100% corn uh, because the company, I think it's the same company that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, does 90. You ever try 90, 20 year old? Yes. Yeah. That's some decent stuff, right? 20 years old and not very expensive, like 60 bucks or something. Yeah, it's um, so Peter's saying that it's a solid 88 for him and no water needed. Mm. Um, all right, right on. I added a little bit of water and I do find it slightly improved it, but I like it. I, I definitely like it. I think it's good stuff. And I, I really encourage and recommend that more Canadian whiskeys are bottling at cast strength and nice age statements on the bottle. Even as young as three years old, it's fine with me. Um, I'm going to go on to the last straw here. So funny story behind this last straw. I had like an outdoor uh, blind tasting with a couple of my buddies and I poured this for them both or three of them, sorry, uh, for three guys blind. And some guys are guessing it's wise is 23 <laughs> you guys are guessing that like it was older like bourbon or something like that and then we did the reveal and they were shocked and not only were they shocked at, at how good a local distillery like last straw is because it's from Vaughan, ontario but they're shocked that there's a three-year-old age statement on that bottle right mm -hmm. so very cool um gonna taste it nose it really quick so this also has a little bit of water. Uh, it It is pretty hot at cast strength at 65.8, which is also to be expected because 65.8 is pretty hefty at three years old. Um, Donner Pass in the house saying, was Thanksgiving in Canada last month? Yeah, our Thanksgiving was October, what, 14th or something like that? I forget what it was this year, but yeah. Yeah, yeah happy Thanksgiving to all the Americans out there. You guys are uh, doing it up right. Yeah. So old Potter Distillery, like uh, Peter White saying there, Highwood, hundred percent corn is the Great Plains. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm a big fan of rye, and I actually think I might prefer rye younger. To be honest with you. Yeah, I guess I don't like. Does rye necessarily have the same kind of? Uh, aging process like a peat wood like it loses a little bit of the potency 
at a higher age, you know, younger rise, maybe a little more vibrant. Yeah, I think that might be bang on. Actually, I don't. I don't know. I haven't had too many older rise. I, I'm sure the older the people that have had older rise can speak to that. But this is great stuff. Honestly, I really, really like uh, this rye, especially with a little bit of water added to it because it levels it out. It makes it a little bit less hot. Going to give this one an 86. I think it's awesome stuff as well. Nice. Yeah. Honestly, it's too bad that there was only 48 bottles of the cast strength because I like the idea of, even if it's a bit hot at 65.8%, I like the idea of being able to play with uh, the water as opposed to just getting the other offering at a lower ABV, right? Right. Um, and then last but not least, uh, you know what? I'm going to save the lot 40 cash rank for another night. So what was it? 85, 86. Mm -hmm. And those are interchangeable. I, I could go as high as an 87 on both of these as low as like an 84 on both of these. But, uh, I think those are fair marks. Right. These are really good, really good whiskeys. Yeah. That lot 40 dark Oak, uh, when I had it, um, in that tasting with Don, uh, I guess it was probably, how long ago was that? Like three, four months ago. Might have been even more than that. Cause it was, did you go to the event? Like were you at no, the so it was, it was through Toronto whiskey society and they had supplied samples to everyone who signed up for the tasting. And then Don just did it through zoom. Mm. So we all had the samples of all his like experimental stuff, um, that he was coming out with. Um, and that one kind of stood out as, I think it was my favorite of the whole night. But yeah, really nice. I think that that technique, that double maturation, um, heavily charred, heavily toasted barrels, you know, Mictors does it well. Um, I'm trying to think who else does that. Woodford's, like we said before. Yeah, Woodford does a great job of it. Yeah, I think you'll see that. I mean, it's, it's, it's easy to do, you know, like take a virgin oak cask and char it. I mean, it's, they're easy to source, they're easy to do. So you'll probably see that coming out a lot more these days for sure. And they're probably like very reusable casks afterward, right? Like yeah, for sure. You're not really spent like making the whiskey spend too much time in there to like strip it of its quality, right? So yeah, um, I definitely think you'll you'll see that more. And then those those barrels will will probably be shipped to Scotland or who knows, right? <clears throat> um, I think uh, Jason Fisk was saying. Oh, I have these uh, slide to the right with three fingers or slide. Why isn't that showing up? There we go. KWM Shelter Point just released an 11 year old single grain cask uh, rye. So it's 11 year old single grain. Does it probably it could be a combination of malted and unmalted rye? But um, hmm. Shelter Point, man, I have two bottles coming from Shelter Point. I bought two of them. One is a their their standard single single malt barley. And one is a single mar a uh, single malt barley, aged in an additional cask. I think six years in a regular like bourbon cask or something like that, and then finished in a heavily charred virgin oak cask. So I'm very curious about that one because uh, Shelter Point has had some things that have really impressed me so far. I've had another KWM. Um, I think Peter White actually mentioned it. A nine year old shelter point um uh cash rank so that was a cash rank rye as well also very good so nice. yeah nice. so i mean we're at the point now where not only are the big names putting out cash rank whiskey putting out stuff that matters right but they're throwing age statements on it as young as three years old which is great they're being transparent which was a criticism of canadian whiskey for a long time right um so putting three years old on a bottle is a statement, I think. Yeah. And I think that, I mean, I think the next thing that the distillers can do is putting something on the label saying that they're not using that 9.09% .09 rule and adding, you know, whatever they can into the whiskey. Yeah. You know, it's almost like a, a, a disclaimer that would be, not really known for the majority of drinkers, but for people like us, we would love to see that on there. Yeah. Um, I would even, I would be proud of the company. And, and I think kudos to Canadian club because as much as they're still using that 9.0% 0.9% rule, 
they're they're being very transparent about them using it. So right. for, their, for their 41, 42, 43, they, they claim to add younger spirit into that whiskey, but they admit it. They're admitting it. They're saying there's younger rye in this whiskey. There's um, in the 42, they admitted that there's two types of younger rye in that whiskey, right? So um, obviously they can't exceed 9.09%, but at least they're being transparent about it. And then the buyer knows what they're buying. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, I think it's great that the Canadian club is using nine, over 90%, 41 or 40, 41, 42, 43 now, a uh, year old whiskey in their, in their, um, in their bottles. Right. So being transparent about that other less than 10% is, is a, a huge step in Canadian whiskey, in my opinion. So um, I think Sasha was asking when the LCB will have that lot 40 uh, dark oak. I think February is what I heard. Yeah, I think in the new year. Yeah, uh, yeah February is when Don was saying. This showed up in BC um, way before everybody else. So this is one of the ones that was actually a dis from the distillery directly. And he signed all the ones that were at the distillery. Um Maybe I shouldn't have opened this bottle. Maybe it would be worth something for that signature. Uh, I'm I'm not a big fan of of signatures on whiskey bottles. I, I like I'm of the belief that if you sign whiskey bottles, they're even more likely not to be opened. So, right, right. So, I, I actually believe in uh, that sign the box, not the not the bottle kind of thing, right? kind of cool though i guess um i had a couple i one of the first time i met don actually was at an event where he was signing uh this bottle actually not this one particularly but he was signing the first release of these um so kind of cool i guess to do it in person you know meet the distiller get a signed bottle but yeah i totally agree like the one that he assigned i still have it sealed and like will i ever open that i don't know maybe not it's yeah. just a collect just collector dust now yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, I do feel for um, Canadian craft distilleries because it co the overhead on a lot of these like smaller distilleries, like the rent and all that stuff, it's like super expensive. These guys that have been around and are like multi-million dollar corporations don't have to deal with all that. Uh, and they can put out the bottle that you have in your hand right now at 65 bucks. And that's like, easy for them right like uh alberta distillers is like a huge company they they supply all sorts of different companies made millions and millions of dollars over the years so they can afford to put out one of their best products ever in my opinion at 65 bucks yeah right uh whereas like um when don was about to release this he was asking me about price and and, and what i thought and i gave him my two cents and i said do yourself a favor and go buy a bottle of Alberta premium cash drink. This was way before, uh, what's his face named it Whiskey of the year. <laughs> yeah. um, but I said, I honestly said that to uh, the other Don, Don DeMonte, who owns last straw, uh, distillery. And I said, do yourself a favor, buy, buy the Alberta premium cash drink because, um, they're charging 65 bucks for the cash drink. And, and he did, he did that. So, um, he, and then he ended up putting it up at a, a, re, a really similar price. So good for him to, despite, I mean, I'm sure it was, it's tougher for him to put this out 48 bottles at 65 bucks a bottle, where the <laughs> bottles you think were produced of that Alberta premium. How did he come to 48 bottles? Like he just took a little bit of a cask or what? Yeah. So he took a portion of the cask, put it into like, put it into bottle. I cast. so what? So originally what had happened is he invited myself, uh, Blair, Willi uh, Blair Williams, right? That's the last name. Um, Davin, the caramel, um, and a bunch of other like bloggers and reviewers and book writers and, and that sort of stuff. And he got us to vote on an ABV after tasting it at three different ABVs. So I voted cash strength and a couple other guys voted cash strength, but I think the majority actually voted 43%. There was, there was a representative from uh, Toronto 
uh, whiskey society there as well that night. Okay. And um, Blair Fli uh, Phillips. Thanks, Peter. Peter's always my Canadian whiskey uh, <laughs> knowledge guru right there. So uh, Blair Phillips, sorry. Uh, my apologies, Blair. Um, so yeah, so we all got to vote and I voted cash strength, but I think it was kind of like a mixed bag, right? I think a bunch of people were voting for different ABVs. So he decided he's going to do 48 bottles at cash strength and then the rest at 43. So you're tasting that blind though? Uh, we knew the ABVs. We knew, oh, okay. Yeah, we did know the ABVs. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, if you sold them out that quick, I mean, it'd be cool if you could do bigger releases in the future. Um, interesting to see what Alberta Premium will do with another batch of this. You know, I yeah, know that sure. like Bon Livermore ran into some issues with this, you know, having to drop the age uh, one year and then dropped it all together and then they didn't even release it this year. But yeah, but he still has some on the Wiser site. Like on the actual uh, Wiser site, he has the new French Oak one. But oh, yeah. that, that was like the least enjoyed by most, right? Yeah. I wonder if that bottle's opened up now. Because it was, it was like relatively hot and, and like not even in the same league, in my opinion, as the other two at first. I got a bottle of it open somewhere. I think you should uh, do a little head to head. You know, it might be in a box, in a closet, under some stuff. So. Actually, I have a, a good question for you. Yeah. You have two bottles there. We're going to we're going to put the spotlight on you for a second here. Mhm. Mm if you can figure it out. <laughs> if you can figure this out. We'll... <laughs> oh, okay. You got it. Now it's just me. What were you going to ask? I think you just completely eliminated yourself and now it's my live show. I think Rob was going to ask what I prefer between Alberta Premium Cast Strength and the original 12 year old. It's for me, it's still this, it's still the original 12 year old. I think this, um, one of the best Canadian whiskeys I've ever had, probably the best actually, now that I think of it. Um, nothing wrong with this one. Uh, awesome, awesome stuff. Just depth of flavor. Um, you know, balance, um, the rye spice in here, the banana nut bread note that you get with this uh, is just so, so good. Um, the Alberta Premium Cast Strength, really awesome. The, the fruit notes in this, like the apricot, kind of like peach combo, really unique in a rye. Um, so yeah, but for me, if you ask me uh, what I prefer, it's the OG Lot 40 cast strength for sure, 100%. All right. That was the answer I was looking for. Well, I mean, not that I thought you were going to pick that, but I just wanted to know your, your true opinion. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much. And, like, I don't know anything about yeast. So I'm, I'm being very, like, open about this. I don't know much about yeast and, and the differences between your, the yeast. I do know that certain companies have fantastic – Distillate, like right off, right off the the distill, like distillation process, their distillate is fantastic. Some companies have it, some companies don't, and I think that obviously has to do with the ingredients. So, like whatever ingredients, whatever grain they're using, but I think it does have a huge component to do with yeast. And I don't know what yeast strain that uh, Last Straw is using, but whatever it is, it's awesome because it. I noticed this note in each one of their whiskeys and in all their spirits, in all the spirits that they use this, whatever it is. And it's this like bready, like very bread like sweetness. Um, and I love it. And they use all local ingredients, by the way. They use Ontario rye for this, for this whiskey. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd be very curious to know which yeast they're using in comparison with like Lot 40, for example. And, and I think. If like I had to really like if we really had to dig, I think we would find out that Alberta premium yeast is the reason why we're getting that peach apricot. Kind of yeah, I would I would say so for sure because if you, you taste a lot of like new make spirits and you get like that peachy like um, fruit note and a lot of different new makes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, it'd be interesting to see what Wiser's does for yeast strains. If they're using the same yeast strain for their distillate, or if they've got different ones for different batches, and yeah, or maybe even just different ones for like Lot Forty Wiser yeah. or Pike, uh, whatever Pike Creek or whatever it's called. I'm not sure if Don's been asked that before, but maybe he has. I don't. I don't remember. I don't. I don't know. Like, not too many people talk about yeast strain. I will say that there's one company that I really want to know what ingredients they're using. And if I ever had to start my own distillery, I would bust their chops to get their yeast strain and their barley. And it's uh, Stranahan's. It's that mm. Colorado single malt. And I don't know what they're doing, but there's this ridiculous, nice, like, bubblegum, fruity sweetness in their single malt. And they're relatively young whiskeys. Like they're actually very young whiskeys. Uh, and Colorado by no means is a hot climate. It's actually the opposite. Right. High altitude. Um, but for whatever reason, it just really works. And, and I don't like, have you tried a couple of China hens before, right? Yeah. Um, but one that I liked the best, I think what was their sherry cask? Was it? Yeah. I think it might've been their sherry cask. The diamond, the diamonds peak, I think is really good as well. The yeah. Strength, I think I really like. Uh, I had a sample of the cast strength from um, our buddy Jason, who's going to be live. Uh, actually, we got to pay attention to the time because he's going to be live probably, soon. Probably now. Yeah. So he's actually live now. So we're going to sign out in about what? Three, four minutes? Hey, man. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to overlap Jason. Uh, they're celebrating Thanksgiving tonight. Um, Jason's had a recent rough ride and i you know i don't want to interfere with a celebration for him he, need, he needs all the celebrating he can he can have um yeah peter white's agreeing with your choice on the lot 40 saying the 12 is still king yeah yeah i mean it was it was such such a great deal too i mean i think what what was this 75 bucks or something like that it was the cheapest one out of all of the lot 40 cash strings because they upped the price to like a hundred yep. next year. Yep. Um, Cause they're like, <laughs> we priced that way too low. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, one of the best buys um, in Canadian whiskey history, probably for sure. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, one of the best Canadian whiskeys probably ever, in my opinion. I mean, since I've been drinking whiskey, it's been for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I can't speak to stuff, you know, way in the back in the day, but like they didn't present whiskey like this way back then, you know, it no. was always just for mixing with whatever. And it was usually at 40% because back in the day, it was not cool to drink anything above 40% because it, you know, it was too hot. It wasn't smooth. It wasn't smooth enough for the speakeasies. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, in case you're just joining us, uh, we are going to be signing out because uh, our boy Jason from the Mash and Drum is live, I think, now. If not, he will be any minute. Um, check out this Great Plains. It's Canadian whiskey from Alberta, made in BC. So the company's in Alberta, but the whiskey inside is actually made in BC, 100% corn. I gave it an 85, but could easily be as high as an 87. Um, this rye here is from Last Straw Distillery in Vaughan, Ontario, so close to Toronto. And it's a banger. I really, really like rye, and I love that they put a three-year-old age statement on this. They're obviously a newer distillery. Check them out. You can access their stuff online as well. Jeremy, why don't you tell these guys where they can find you, man? Uh, you guys know where I'm at, Super Social Club. Uh, tomorrow, I have a review coming out of the brand new Lafroig Karches Port and Wine, and I compare it to the old Karches Portwood. Uh, so check out that review. That will come out tomorrow, uh, late afternoon, most likely. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot, actually. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a good addition to the Karches line, for sure. And we will get you guys a podcast in the near future, hopefully. So, uh, yeah. All right. And maybe it'll look a little bit something like this because of the new lockdown rules. And right. yep. All right, guys. Hope you guys have a good night. Maybe I'll catch you in the mash and drum chat. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, guys.